Okay, hey, thanks for checking out this video of the M2S Dual Sport Ultra 27.5 machine. <laughs> um, just wanted to give you a quick overview. I'm not going to get into some real detailed specifications about this bike. You can check that out on their website and um, get the, the very detailed specs. But I wanted to let you know just a few of the minor modifications that I've made to the bike to, to better suit me for my particular riding. And then uh, also maybe just give you a brief overview of some of the features as far as how the bike works, which is one of the reasons why I have it up on this log, because I want to show you the motor running a little bit if I possibly can. So um, get right into it. First of all, uh, you got a 750 watt uh, battery that uh, is going to end up giving you uh, anywhere between 20 miles on just nothing but the throttle, no pedal assistance whatsoever, or 50 miles of you pedaling uh, level terrain, uh, uh, utilizing the uh, full pedal assist mode, and uh, frankly I've gotten almost 90 miles on uh, particular rides where I'm turning the motor completely off and then turning it back on only as needed and really getting a lot of extension out of it that way. So pretty incredible what it's capable of there. Uh, the the motor itself, 750 watts, I think a thousand watt peak. Uh, it's got both the uh, cadence as well as torque sensors in it. Uh, so not really any bone jarring uh, engagement of the motor there that I've ever noticed. I think it uh, works exceptionally well. Uh, front and back braking power. Uh, you do have the hydraulic discs uh, from Tecro and uh, 200 millimeter uh, rotor up front, 180 and back. Uh, stopping power has never been an issue for me. Uh, these do come with the Maxxis Minion tires, plenty of, uh, of grip with regards to that. They're 2.3 wide and um, I have converted those over into tubeless and uh, enjoyed that right there. It does have 150 millimeters of travel both in the front and the back with uh, lockouts on both the front and the back and uh, 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 select between uh, locked out trail and fully open in the front. Uh, I have changed out the chain ring up front to be a race face uh, e-bike specific chain ring and chain and I thought that that is a good uh, upgrade with regards to some longevity and lower maintenance uh, uh, as far as that. I did end up putting a KS Lev uh, dropper seat post in. As you can see I have it externally routed. Uh, I just felt like that was going to be a little bit lower maintenance for me. I was a little concerned with down at the motor where you, if I would have gone internal routing, which you can do, um, I was just concerned that I was going to end up suffering a little kink there that was going to cause me some maintenance issues. Other, plenty of other people have uh, told me that that's not an issue, but uh, I just chose external routing and uh, I've I've thought it's wor worked perfectly. The dropper seat post itself is smooth as butter. I, I, I have no complaints. I'd buy another KS any day of the week. It was a, uh, just a, a really, really, really smooth operating dropper seat post. As far as the derailleur and back, you do have nine gears, obviously one by nine. And uh, this is a uh, rear derailleur is from Shimano. It's an Alveo. And again, no problems. Uh, regular maintenance on this bike. Uh, every time it comes back for a ride, it's uh, all maintenance up, cleaned, everything like that. And I just haven't had any issues with regards to that. So operating-wise, some of the things that I just wanted to end up showing you a little bit about is this uh, display panel. Up here I have it right now. And as you can see, whoop, <laughs> as you could have seen, it's on. I just now it just now powered itself off but we're going to power it back on real quickly you can see that right now i'm in a le pedal assist level one but by utilizing this controller right here i'm going to end up going up or down in my pedal assist to level five and if what i do or zero even if i uh, long press the plus button right over here you're going to see from, to the right there where it says eco I'm going to go to sport mode and now you get five 
more levels of pedal assist. An important part about sport mode is it takes the limiter off. So if you were um, really pedaling like crazy uh, in sport mode on level five, you could go as fast as 30 miles per hour. Uh, it, this, this thing just runs. So good for not only the off-road uh, rider, I'm gonna long press the a, uh, plus button and I'm gonna put it back into eco mode. Let's see if we can get that. And and now I'm gonna get a lot a little more uh, longevity out of my battery as a result of having it in the eco mode. Nice other feature here that I'd like to show you, and this is one of the reasons why I have it on the log, is it's walk assist. If I long press the minus button, say I uh, had trouble getting up a hill, I got off of the bike, but I still need to walk up that hill or through an obstacle or a feature, I long press the minus button, I go into walk mode, and now the bike is going to walk itself through that feature. Um, as I walk, just a nice slow speed, but instead of you having to push the bike, it's gonna end up walking it at about two miles an hour uh, and uh, just stay with you without you having to do all of the work. Nice thing too is if you get stuck in that situation and you forgot to downshift to maybe uh, gear one, right? Um, this would give you the opportunity while the bike is moving that you could end up shifting the, the gears down while you're walking it. So a nice little feature to have on any e-bike. I think it's an absolute must. I just end up releasing that button and there you go. Um, I did end up doing some reconfiguration on this bike. Uh, I bought it as a large, and I'm just close to 5'9". I've always ridden large bikes, and, and uh, in, in order to shorten up the cockpit just a little bit, what I ended up doing is moving my saddle forward and uh, eliminating the extended the handlebar stem. I ended up bringing in a shorter handlebar stem to the bike, and that has worked exceptionally well for me. Another modification that I made to the cockpit area was putting my uh, dropper seat post lever here right next to the uh, grip perfect placement right and then the controller and then a throttle uh, not every bike has this kind of a throttle it's kind of a nice feature although when the bike is live um, as soon as you press this throttle you're gonna get you're gonna get full-on engagement of the motor now that could be good and bad for you if you are uh, just parked, don't even realize that the motor is on, and you do hit the throttle, it's going to immediately want to take off on you. So um, best that when you are uh, best that when you are uh, uh, stopped for any kind of period of time that you go ahead and power down so you don't have that accident. But the nice part about having that throttle available is if you're kind of stuck for some reason, maybe you've got a leg injury or anything like that, and you just end up wanting to just coast, um, you know, you're right there on the bike and from a stop, you're immediately, almost like a motorcycle, getting to go. Now, something to be aware of when you have a throttle attached to a bike, especially a bike of this strength. I didn't realize my finger was in the way. Hopefully not too much of that. Um, is, is that you do change the e-bike status to a category five by having that throttle. So it would be illegal to take out on a lot of trails. Now, let me just touch on that for just a quick second. In my experience, I have ridden all kinds of single track, double track, off-road trails, name it. Um, I have never once been stopped or had any kind of an issue, but I'm going to say that I, I'm a, I try to be a very courteous rider um, out there on the trails. So regardless of whether I'm with mountain bikers or sea hikers or a ranger or anything like that, you know, I am, uh, I'm abiding by speed limits. I'm uh, not overtaking anybody in a radical fashion. I'm, I'm slow about how I do that. And uh, that's made that perhaps a difference for me in my experience with using an e-mountain bike out on trails. I have never had an issue, but uh, something to just be aware of. You can disconnect that throttle if you wish. It's not a big deal to do. You can literally disconnect it and take it completely off the bike, and that changes the bike down to a Category 3 bike, uh, so long as you stay out of the sport mode. Um, and you could you could be quiet about that. that. That even exists, I guess, if somebody were to actually be talking to you. So. Um, 
gosh, uh, about all I can really uh, say about that bike without getting, as I say, too technical about it. Been a good bike for me. I've really enjoyed it. Um, works very, very well for both the commuter just out on the road because of the speeds that you can accomplish, but uh, also out on the trail rides because of its full suspension capability and, uh, and how it rides. So got any questions uh, as far as the exact specs I would encourage you to look at the M2S website for the 27.5 dual sport ultra